my name is Scotland Ernestine Ballard. Most people call me Scotty. I.E., not Y. My dad's Y. Um, you are currently in Edwardsville, Illinois, where I've been living the past six years. I am currently planning to go to Murray State University in the fall, where I'll be pursuing a public relations major. And Poetry Out Loud has changed my life. <laughs> I've pretty much participated in it for the past two years in my junior and senior year. And honestly, it really showed me what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Being able to be in a situation in a place where people so vividly love what they're doing, it's, it's monumental. And the program itself doesn't even feel like a competition so much as it feels like a camaraderie between friends because everyone's there not just to win but to show their love for words to show their love for poetry and when you're in that kind of space in that kind of atmosphere you already won <laughs> i guess you could say you, you really already won um how I got involved in Poetry Out Loud is a pretty interesting story because <laughs> it all starts with extra credit. I was a junior in my honors junior American Lit course with my teacher, Ms. Haskins, and we were going over a unit in Transcendentalism, which is basically loving nature, free thinking, all that jazz. And our project in particular was to live a little and that meant pretty much anything whether it was going into a park and like screaming at the top of your lungs or taking a shower in the dark or something kind of out there like like something you wouldn't have done and for me i tried to think of two things that i really liked to do but i hadn't done before one of those were joining my broadcasting club which i am so glad that i've done because i made so many friends and the other was doing poetry out loud because I love poetry. I love reciting poetry for people, but I'd never done it in a sort of official setting or a competition for that matter. So I tried it out and see what would happen. And the rest was an absolute roller coaster of surprises because when i got past the school and got past regionals it was quite a surprise because for someone who had never been in a contest before and never even done poetry in such a public sphere before it was a very eye-opening experience when i got to springfield and did state in 2019 it was amazing i met friends that i know will last me a lifetime and being in a place, again, with so many people who love what they're doing and love the poems and the poets themselves was amazing. Now, I know that there wasn't a Nationals this year, so I can only explain my experience with Nationals last year, and that in and of itself was quite an adventure. I mean, I'd never been to Washington, D.C. before, and I had never been so far away from home, but Getting to meet people from all across the country and even territories out, outside the United States itself was just, it was so excellent because I got to meet people that I never would have otherwise met before and people from all different backgrounds and creeds and colors and just different ideologies in general. And I got to know them both through the poems that they chose and their recitations. And in the end of it all, no matter who got what, we all got better, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term. And I think that is something that Poetry Out Loud gives people that you just otherwise wouldn't be able to have. The ability to make friends and fall in love with poems that you otherwise would have never found in your normal day. And that's something really beautiful, I think. What is something that I take from Poetry Out Loud with me? Um, for one, I definitely take the poems that I memorize with me for the most part. And that's partly because all the time when I talk to one of my friends, we keep mentioning the same line. What kind of delusion are you under? You see the lightning, but not the thunder. Which are some lines from Self Help by Michael Ryan that I did last year. And 
it's so funny that those are some of the more memorable lines for me because it helps me both keep the memories fresh in my mind, not just of the poem, but of the experience I had with Poetry Out Loud. And it also kind of feels nice to know that you have, in essence, a couple poems in your pocket that no one else might have. Um, another thing I really love that I keep from Poetry Out Loud are the books that they give you because at Springfield during state, the night before the competition, you would often get like a chocolate and a poem book. And I found it really nice because it helped to ease the tense atmosphere because everyone's super nervous and well, chocolate really makes the world go round. And having a book to read far after the competition really helps because there are times where I will look through this book and just find poems that I either saw being recited on Poetry Out Loud's website a long, long time ago, or find poems that really resonate to me in different points in my life. And having those kinds of things and connections really, I guess, strengthens a person. Um, confidence is definitely something that I've gained from Poetry Out Loud because well, when you speak to a couple hundred people and say a poem and not like, you know, shaking your boots, I guess you can do pretty well at any school presentation you do afterwards. So there's definitely that. Um, I think the biggest contribution Poetry Out Loud has done for my life is sort of show me what direction I want to take in my life. During my high school career, I often didn't know what I wanted to do afterwards. I wasn't sure what kind of career I wanted to go into, what kind of job profession best suited me. And after doing Poetry Out Loud and after seeing the kind of experience and love of people that it gave me, I realized that like I really do love people. And going into public relations and even journalism really helped show me that what I want to do in life is be able to talk to people, whether it's reciting poems or telling them news stories or little things that you may find interesting around your neighborhood that you may have not seen before. It really showed me that I, there, there's power in words and whatever you say. And that is just powerful in and of itself. And I cannot thank Poetry Out Loud enough for giving me that opportunity to find out what I want to do with my future, because I have no idea what I would be doing without it. Um, if I had to say what were my two like most memorable and favorite experiences from Poetry Out Loud, one of them would be um, the poetry slams that happen after competitions because last year at nationals, after the whole finals and everything was figured out, we would often have a poetry slam in the downstairs area of the hotel. And essentially we were all in a big lopsided circle and we started pulling out our phones, pulling out our little notebooks or whatever. And we just started going at it. People stood up and started doing poems that they had been written, they, they, that they had written since freshman year or even in middle school and it was so invigorating to be able to see people's original works and how it sort of just culminated into the person that they are now and the sort of again camaraderie and friendship between everyone was just amazing because after every poem we snapped we clapped we laughed everyone had a chance to do something and at the end of it, it really felt like I had known those people for really my entire life. And those connections are just, I don't know how to describe it other than absolutely amazing. So, I mean, those, those are the things that I really love from Poetry Out Loud. So the biggest piece of advice that I can say for people who are interested in doing Poetry Out Loud or maybe you're on the fence or whatnot is live a little in fact live a lot because at the end of the day you you only have one life to live and sometimes the best thing that you can do is to just not think about how people are going to react to how you're going to recite this poem or 
what's going to happen after you recite it or worrying about what could happen or what ifs and maybes and what and everything like that because at the end of the day it's you and the poem and what you have with that poem and how it speaks to you will show if it's a poem that you hold dear to your heart and you find resonates within your life it'll show if it's a poem that makes you think of someone and using that connection helps put you in the right space and the right mindset to do so it'll show you can't really force authenticity you just have to find it in yourself and that is the one thing i'll say for like people who want to do it find the poem that speaks to you find your live a little find your live a lot because that's yours the poem that inspired me the most was actually the poem that i picked last and it was worth by marilyn nelson like look i'm i'm a black woman in america and in my high school experience there weren't a lot of pieces of literature poetry or books that i found that had someone that looked like me and was able to, do, to detail my own life experiences when i read marilyn nelson's poem however it it really jumped at me because it asked me the same questions i had been asking myself but never voiced out loud and having a poem that is able to do that able to just reach out and grab you from wherever you are and be able to resonate you it's in such a way that is both awe-inspiring and kind of show-stopping is it so important it is incredibly important and that poem in particular really sort of did it for me it, it really made me solidified in whatever i was doing because if i can find a poem like that and it was only 16 lines or so then and, and out of a plethora of poems in an anthology of over like 900 and something i think i think that is something that people can do find a poem that speaks to you whether it's robert frost or William Shakespeare or Marilyn Nelson, the poem that's right for you will speak to you. A, a life-changing result of doing poetry out loud. Um, definitely people know my name in town now, so I do get a lot more highs, so that's really fun. Um, I look at a lot more poetry in a different way before i would often just sort of skim it and be like oh this this is a poem this is a poem i may be doing for class this is a poem i may have just seen now it's more looking at a poem and seeing how that person was feeling and how they see the world when they wrote it and it's really interesting because it gives me the sort of mindset and ability to look past my own perspective essentially and try and emphasize more with how people are feeling and that's really really good um another life-changing thing that happened for poetry that happened because i was in poetry out loud was i felt and i still feel a lot more sure of myself i know now that i love poetry and that surety comes when i write my own poetry when i look at videos for poetry when i sort of get my friends inspired to write their own and having that sort of i guess pillar in my life helped me to find things that i find important for me and so being in poetry out loud really helps show like what you find important in what you love and how you can see that in pretty much everything you do because now it's kind of cliche to say but i mean now i kind of see poetry in everything whether it's being at the park and kind of just 
looking at a dragonfly or a fountain or just a few trees, whether it's looking at my messy room and finding some sort of poem in that, whether it's eating my mom's cooking for the night and finding a little snippet of a poem in that, it's, it's cliche to say, but it, you really can find poetry in everything, in anything. And that's really beautiful. <laughs> really beautiful. The DC experience, DC finals, it was exhilarating and an adventure, but it was also kind of overwhelming. And I say that as a person that had never been in a competition before and suddenly found myself over 800 miles away from home. Don't get me wrong, I am completely happy at the fact that I missed like a week of school, but it was a little bit overwhelming because I was in a, a completely new space and in a place where really I was never in before. And it was really interesting because in the final sort of round, when we, when the top five of us were in the green room and sort of chilling and having fun and eating snacks and stuff. There was a moment where we all went around and asked each other how many years we'd been doing poetry out loud. And most people said two, three years since their sophomore year, since their freshman year. And then it came to me and I said, well, this is my first time. It was a little bit nerve wracking because well, here's all of these experienced people, and I kind of just did it literally to try and get an A in my class. Um, but it was still very fun. But overwhelming is something that I think is real, because going so quickly from a sort of normal to a sort of spotlight is jarring because how do how do I describe it like I, w I was used to a couple of my friends and my teachers knowing my name saying hi and you know making conversation with them when I got back to school I wasn't as used to seeing my principal personally say hi to me, seeing my friends' friends say hi to me, seeing teachers that I never took classes with say hi to me, seeing actually like county officials say hi to me. It was kind of weird. It was kind of weird. Um, but not like a bad weird. It slowly became somewhat of a new normal. But I guess be prepared to be a little bit overwhelmed, not necessarily in a bad way, but sometimes in a good way. It's definitely overwhelming when you take such a big step, but that's part of the adventure, isn't it? If someone had told me that when I was a sophomore, I would spend my junior year going across the country and performing poetry and loving every minute of it, I'd probably call them a little bit of a liar. But it's really amazing how things sort of come about because never, never in my wildest dreams would I think that doing an extra credit assignment would have sent me all the way to DC. Never would I have imagined that doing classwork and finding three poems out of 900 something would earn me five, like 50 friends that are going to be with me for the rest of my life. Never would I have thought doing a simple school competition would have created such a monumental change in my community. I never would have thought that. But I guess most adventures aren't really the things that you think about, so <laughs> they're kind of just the things you do. 
if I could say something to the girl in freshman year that maybe didn't know much about poetry out loud and was kind of nervous about any everything anyway, hmm. if I could say anything to her, I would say breathe, breathe first and take another breath. And just for good measure, take one more. Afterwards, go at it at your own pace. For me, that was looking at poems and kind of just clicking on them randomly just to read through them. Don't think about it as a recitation. Think about it as, well, what sparks my eye? If the, thir if, the, if the first three lines don't grab your attention, move to the next poem. If the first three lines there don't catch your attention, move to another one. If you find one that does catch your attention, whether it's the title or how it sounds, read it over. Maybe say it to yourself a little bit. Don't worry about memorizing it or what it may be. Just go at it slow. Hmm. All right. So my last poem that I did, Ode by Arthur O'Shaughnessy, is very interesting because it has another meaning now versus when I did it last year. When I did it the first time and when I recited it, it was really a sort of thank you to both my literature teachers, my fine arts teachers, and really all of the teachers I ever had conversations with that helped me to just think about something for a little bit. It was a thank you to giving me the opportunity to think, to ask questions, to ask questions I wouldn't have otherwise even thought to ask. And it was really me thanking them for giving me the gift of choir, when I was in choir, theater when I was in theater arts, literature when I was in English classes, and to my teachers themselves for taking the time to sort of instill that in me. And I think that's one of the greatest things about Poetry Out Loud are the teachers because they inspire so much creativity and so much ingenuity that it's, if I hadn't had my teacher, if I hadn't had Miss Haskins or Miss Altwine or Miss Vaguely or Miss Pontius or even Mr. McEvely, if I hadn't had those teachers in my life, I honestly don't know what I would be doing. Probably not poetry out loud, but they created a sort of instilled sort of urge to do better, to ask more questions, to do more things, just to see if I could, just to see if I can. And I think with that, that's really the biggest thank you I can give to teaching. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Ode takes another meaning for me now especially now that I've graduated and finished Poetry Out Loud. And for me, it, it really kind of goes as a thank you to the program in itself, because it's thanking every single person in there, from the judges who are sometimes poets themselves, to all of the people I got to meet and who participated in Poetry Out Loud, to the people who coordinate it in themselves and really just to the immense impact that Poetry Out Loud has on itself. Because our, we, we're all dreamers, we're all music makers. And when I, when I did that poem the first time and lis listening back on it now, it's kind of amazing how much the arts and humanities have changed my life and how much it can change anyone's life, be it poetry or music or dance or theater or anything. It's 
it enriches a person's life in a way no other thing really can. And I think you really got you really got to give props to them for it because without art, without those kind of humanities, without having a way to be creative in whatever form that is, what would you do? How would you describe the world around you? And looking back on it now, it's a thank you for the opportunity it gave me for taking someone who did extra credit and giving them a chance to have fun, to live not just a little, but a lot of, and to just change her entire life doing it. I said once to myself, and I said it to my parents as well, if I can make one person in the crowd or behind the camera, just one person feel how I was feeling, I already did what I came to do. And poetry out loud and poetry and art in and of itself does that. And having the opportunity to do that is one of the things I am most thankful for in my life. So thank you.